Hi, so today we're going to be looking at the Denise Audio Dragonfire, which is, I think, an amazing plugin. Uh, it's quite new, um, and I feel it really brings something new to the table, which you don't often see in a new plugin, but this one really does. It's kind of a compressor mixture of compression and EQ. Um, it shapes the tonal uh, proportion of the sound like an EQ in a sense, but it also compresses at the same time. So it really, you can really shape the uh, transient and the sustain part, the dynamics of the sound while you're shaping the tone and it interacts. It's not like a dynamic Q EQ at all. Really something different th than I've heard before. It's really easy and intuitive to use and um, I think it's an amazing addition to the toolbox of a mixer. So what we're going to do is compare this to the traditional way of EQing uh, kick drum and snare. Um, so we'll have a, a normal a traditional EQ and compare that to what the Dragonfire can do. And I hope you find this useful. Um, and if you do, please uh, give the video a like and subscribe to the channel. It really helps me and it's really appreciated. And let's have a look. So a quick run through of the controls. I'm not going to go into great detail on this one because the website, the Denise Audio website already has videos explaining it uh, in great detail. They're really good actually at explaining what they all do, but just really quickly, basically it's like a compressor and like an EQ. Um, talking to the developers, um, we're keen to say that it's not an EQ curve. Um, to my ears, um, it does sound like an EQ in lots of ways. So whether it is technically or not, um, the effect is to boost and cut frequencies. So I think of it as a combination EQ and compressor. I think it's actually multi-band somehow behind this. Um, but basically, it doesn't really matter what what's going on. You can hear what what it does, and that's that's all that matters to me in this particular case. Sometimes I really like to know what's going on exactly with a particular plugin, but with this one, I actually I don't actually feel the need to know. You can just hear right away what it's doing. But a lot of it is straightforward. You've got each of these points, which seem like an EQ curve. You get a frequency gain, a, a Q, and so forth. You can change the type it is, peak, low shelf, high shelf, and so forth. Um, and what it does is it drives harder into the compressor. As I push this up, it drives this frequency harder into the compressor. But at the same time, it boosts that frequency. So you're getting, and it, but that depends on the pull control. So the way this works is that as you move this pull control, you see the gray goes down, what happens is that it compensates. So think of it this way, with the pull all the way to zero, as I push this frequency harder into the compressor, it's also boosting that frequency. So I'm getting a compressed 60 hertz, but also the 60 hertz getting brought up. So you're getting like a really thick boosted part of 60 hertz, or a very, if you've got a longer attack, you're going to get a really like punchy. So you're getting like a boost and a compression in that frequency area at the same time. Whereas if I move the pull down, it compensates. It's like it pulls back on that. So that what you get is you get the compression at 60 hertz, but you don't get a boost. So it doesn't get any louder in the 60 hertz region. It's just getting more compressed there. So that may be what you want. It'll sound kind of more natural to the original sound if you want an area to be more compressed without any boost there, then that's what you would use. But if you really want to hear the compressor, if you really want to kind of hear the, the sculpting more, the EQ with the compression, then you pull this back and, and you then you really hear um, the fact that those frequencies are being compressed and boosted. Now, I'm not 100% sure exactly what's going on here, and I find that explanation, which they give on the website, which I'm not saying isn't right, but I, I find it doesn't make me understand exactly what it's doing that clearly and I'm not clear I totally do understand what's going on under the hood here um, but 
Um, what the developer did say is that there's a, like a multi-band thing going on here somehow behind this. But basically, it doesn't matter to me. You can hear what it does. If you're not using the pull, you basically you hear a lot more boost going on, and you hear the compression really being like driven at the same time. And if you pull back on this, sorry, if you add the pull, you basically it gets the compression, but you don't get that boost. And the whole effect to me is is less apparent. It's less of a kind of, if you really want snap and punch, then you don't want too much pull. Um, or it's a balance, really. It's pulling in the, the, the amount that you really want to hear. So again, explanation's a little fuzzy. I totally um, admit that, because I'm not that clear exactly what it's doing, um, even after having watched the videos, and talking to the developer a little bit. But you can totally hear what it does right away um, so that to me that that's all that counts in this case um, super useful control um, and then you've got the normal things you might expect attack and release and mix ratio threshold this clip thing here is like a really extreme for really driving it like if you want to kind of all buttons in kind of smashing effect that's good for that low and high pass um, and gain and then here we've got um, the drive, it drives saturation into the bends, um, depending on how hard you're driving it, you get more saturation, could be useful. Um, curve is changes the, re the um, release behavior from more of an RMS sound, like a faster release to more of an optical sound where it's a slower release or actually optical is like a two-stage release. I don't know if this actually has a two-stage release, but it says it's more like an optical. So I'm guessing it does, but basically it changes the release behavior and therefore the sound pretty significantly, particularly of the body of the sound. And then you've got RMS. Basically, this is like, is it going to detect the peaks more, react to the peaks, or is it going to be more over to a very moo kind of thing where it's, um, it's more of an RMS kind of a reacting to the overall kind of longer time span of, of volume of, of gain. And you've got the knee, which is straightforward what a knee is. We should all know what a knee is. And that's basically what it does. It's got some other bits and pieces, but that gives you an overview. And if you want the details, go to the website. It's all on there. OK, so here we are with Dragonfire. And I've also got uh, the Brainworks Plugin Alliance SSL here, um, because I'm going to be using snare drum uh, for this to start with. Um, I use the SSL as a go-to drum EQ. It's just something about both the E and G series that for me gets me to where I want to be with drums so quickly and easily uh, in a way that other cues, uh, EQs don't, don't do. Um, I mean, you can get great sound with other EQs, but there's just something about this one that's just like, for me, it's, it's, it's almost sort of designed to get a great drum sound. So. Um, it's my go-to, and so I thought I'd compare what I might do with this to what can be done with the Dragonfire. Um, so they're not the same thing. This is an EQ, the, the SSL, and this is not exactly an EQ. It's, it's kind of a combination, the way I think about it, of compression and EQ. To my ears, anything that changes the frequency content significantly when you move curves and qualities and all the rest of it is, is kind of an EQ of sorts, um, even though there's a lot more going on. Right, so let's have a listen to the snare soloed and dry so you can hear what we're working with here. Okay, so not a bad snare sound, but for this track I want it to be significantly uh, snappier and punchier, and I want it to cut through. So here's the SSL EQ that I set up. So it's still got a lot of kind of low end there, but it's got a lot more um, snappy top end, and I've taken away the boxiness. Uh, so now let's listen to the Dragonfire and see what that's like. So 
sounds really good, different but good. Um, so now let's move between dry, the SSL and the Dragonfire so you can compare them. Start dry. So, uh, to my ears, it really uh, stands up next to the SSL. Of course, it's not the same. It's adding some compression, so there is more snap and punch because of that. But, and I could add a, a compressor after this SSL and get that. Um, I don't think I'd get that out of the compressor in the SSL, but there's certainly other compressors I could get that with. But with this, you can just get it all, all in one go, which is really handy. And it brings out the tone in a way that the SSL doesn't. Now, I'm not saying it's better. I really like the sound of the SSL too, but it, it's equally good to me. It's just, it's different. So let's now have a listen in context just to see how that sounds dry. And then I'll move through the SSL and then the Dragonfire. So you can hear in context, um, they both sound good, but this stands up to my ears right next to the SSL um, in a different way. It's, it's, it's got a different sound, but it's, it's a really good one to my ears. Um, so now what I thought I'd do is play a different, use a different um, setting in the Dragonfire. So I'm gonna open a different one here, um, which is here. So you can hear just something, another approach. Let's try this one. I'll start dry and then I'll bring this in. So super smacky and, and snappy um, because it's using compression. You can, you can get all of that in this one plugin. And an impressive, I have to say, that's with one plugin to get that kind of shaping of the snare tone and that snap in one is, is really impressive. Um, so now I'm gonna mess about with the controls a bit just so you can kind of hear um, a little bit of what it can do. Um, and I'll just mention a couple of things first. The drive, you'll notice the drive, if you compare that to the other one that I had here, the snappier one has less drive, and, and that's because I find that drives, although it can thicken the sound, it, can, it also has a tendency to, to soften transients. And so if I want a really snappy, smacky thing, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna pull back on the drive probably um, if I want that just transients to really stand out. And also the attack time here is shorter because again, um, if it's too short, you'll kill the attack. But if it's too long or longer like this, you get a kind of thicker attack, a more natural sound really. Um, whereas with this faster attack, it's leaving just enough of the transient coming through that you get that real smack, um, but kind of pulling back, grabbing it quite quickly after that, giving you that kind of smacky effect. Um, and that you get with a shorter attack. Um, 
So, and the release here are about the same. Um, the one criticism I have of this uh, plugin, although I think it's really great, I, I really wish that the release range was different. Um, I mean, it goes all the way up to like, you know, three seconds, four seconds, five seconds. Um, and those kind of ranges, I would, you know, they're more like for a specialist use. I wouldn't use them very often. Um, whereas most of the time, I'm using things between like more like 700 and down. So, and a lot of times with something like this, if I'm really trying to, you know, create a, um, attack and impact, it's all going to be down here. And all of that's done in this tiny little bit. It's really quite hard to control. And of course you can double click and type in the number. So it's not a big deal. You can get around it that way. But I kind of wish they had, I don't know, if they want those super long release times available, maybe a, a button that says times four or something. Um, and so that you can have it on times one and have say, you know, this, this whole range between, you know, between a hundred and zero here or something like that would make it a lot easier to control. But minor thing in general, um, I don't have many complaints about this. It, it's really great. So um, also a difference in pull you can see between these two. Um, there's more here, higher ratio slightly, um, and a different curve. So let's mess about with this one and just get an idea of what happens when you start moving controls around. So absolutely stunning uh, range of tones out of this. Um, uh, yeah, it's very impressive, um, I have to say. So let's just now move over to kick drum and see what we can do there. So kick drum, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to start with, got an SSL here and then um, a dragon fire. So I'm gonna 
solo the kick drum and we'll listen to it dry and then I'm just going to move through these two so you can hear them compared. So, really different sounding, but to my ears, it's equally as good sounding um, as the SSL in terms of what you can do with that kick drum. So let's try messing about just so you can see what it sounds like when we start moving the controls with the kick drum. So interesting, when you get this cue really tight here, it starts to ring um, in, a, in a possibly quite useful way. So keep messing with that. So again, a huge range of, um, really huge range of shaping capabilities, um, both with the transient and uh, body of the kick drum and, and the tonal shape of it. Um, really impressive plugin, um, which I am definitely going to be using regularly. So I hope you found this useful. Um, if you did, please give the video a like and please subscribe and hope to see you next time.